Now we solve the second midterm, the one and seven and equivalents using the UBC one amp, two amp tests. At the point where we're trying to find the seven and equivalent to this circuit, we connect a one amp current source, like so. And then we will compute what is the voltage that appears, this voltage, the one we call V1A. Identify this as node 0, node 1, and node 2. Of course, V2 is going to be V1A, one of the voltages we're looking for. Currents in the branches, arbitrarily chosen, like so. We are ready to write our equations. Control equation, the one corresponding to this controlling variable Ix, is that current. Actually, is the current in an RV branch connected between nodes 2 and 0, and the reference one. The current in an RV branch is voltage of the origin of the current V2, minus voltage of the destination of the current, the reference node 0, minus the value of the source, negative 3Ix, divided by the resistance of the branch, 2 ohms because we're assuming this is zero, and that this is zero, two ohms. That is our first equation. KCL for node number one, currents that go in, seven minus V1 over two. Currents that go out, V1 over two, and uh, four amps. KCL equation for node two, Currents that go in, a node 2, 4 amps, and 1 amp. Currents that come out on node 2, is V2 over 4. And uh, this current, Ix. You can write Ix, or you can write this expression. Mm -hmm. It's the same. We have three equations and three unknowns, V1, V2, and Ix. We enter them in the calculator and solve for them. The system of equation has the control equation, KCL1 and KCL2. We can solve for that with a linear solver, and we have that V2 is 11.1 periodic volts, and V2 is just V1A. V1A is 11.1 periodic volts. Now for the 2 amp tests. We replace this current source with a 2 amp current source and we determine, instead of this one, we determine V2A. Absolutely. All the change we need in our equations is, instead of this one, a 2 here, and we solve for V2, and V2 will be V2A. V2A. Let's do that. We go to the system of equations, the control equations KCL1 and KCL2, and we need to edit the last one to change this 1 amp for a 2 amp. That's all we need. We enter edit. And then we go to that equation, this one, and modify that. Instead of that, 4 plus 1 should be plus 2. Plus 2, enter, enter. We are ready, see? We are ready to solve the system again now with 2 amps there. Swap. Solve the linear system. And the solution for V2 is 13.3 periodic, and that is V2A. This V2, 13.3 periodic, is now V2A. 13.3 periodic. The system of equations we need to solve, of course, is the 1112 that we've seen in class for the unknowns V7 and R7 with V1A and V2A 
as the independent terms. 11.1 periodic, 13.3 periodic. Let's solve that. Here are V1A and V2A. Divide that by the 1112 matrix and we obtain V7 and 8.8 .8 periodic and R7 and 2.2 .2 periodic. V7 and 8.8 .8 volts periodic and R7 and is 2.2. .2 ohms periodic. To complete the exercise we need of course to draw the equivalent circuit with the V7 on right side up 8.8 .8 periodic volts and R7 on, which is 2.2 .2 periodic ohms. That is the equivalent circuit at port PQ for the network in the exercise. For part B we need to connect an external resistor, Rx, that extracts maximum power. And we know that value has to be R7, 2.2 .2 ohms periodic. That is a solution to part B. And for part C, what is the maximum power? Just the power in this resistor. And that power is total current squared multiplied by this resistance. So Pmax is 2.2 .2 multiplied by this current squared which is 8.8 .8 periodic volts divided by 4.4 .4 periodic ohms and that maximum power is 8.8 .8 periodic watts and that is the solution to the mini midterm. Thank you very much.